Laura Nero is an interesting artist, mainly because so many people haven't heard about her. It happens a lot in this 1001 album challenge. A particular artist who gets lost to the sands of time. Not everyone has the weight and pull of being the Beatles or Jimi Hendrix. Some artists are ahead of their time and brutally underrated. This woman is such an artist. Eli and the 13th Confession is a gem, and if you haven't listened to it, do yourself a favor, pick it up. Laura has long since passed, but in listening to her music, you hear a soulful voice with deep, rich complexities that capture the imagination. Although the album suddenly drifts from track to track as a suite, there is one in particular that stands out, and that track is titled Emmy. This starts off as a simple pop song, verse, chorus, verse, about love for her now past aunt. At first, it carries a basic crooner vibe with a nostalgic 50s flair. But just when you think you have the song all figured out, just shy of the three minute mark, we get a very different song with an abrupt transition, if you can even call it that. We abandon the typical verse chorus verse structure with a dissonant piano strike. Laura goes off in a morning way singing, Emmy, your mama's been a calling you. The dissonance continues as she sings, who stole mama's heart and cuddled in her garment. Using this distance here is painful, just like Laura's feelings for her aunt. We're not sure where this song is going now. The abandonment of the verse chorus verse structure accentuates that feeling, putting us in the mindset of what it's like for Laura going through this loss. As Laura repeats the words Emily in continued succession, the music begins to speed up. Laura's allowed herself to wall in these feelings of sadness for long enough, and she's trying to pull herself out. She sings, she's got the way to move me, Emmy, repeatedly. As she does this, the band backs her up a triumphant form swelling, rivaling a Rocky movie. We feel that although she's experienced this loss, she is choosing to remember how Emmy moved her, and she is glad that she knew her in this way, even if it wasn't for as long as she wanted. We feel that although she's experienced this loss, she is choosing to remember how Emmy moved her, and she is glad that she knew her that way, even if it wasn't as long as she wanted. In this song, Laura travels through three songs in four minutes. This is just one selection off of the album. Other highlights like Stone Soul Picnic are not only amusing, but straight bopping, transforming from soul ballad to driving horn song and back in 30 second periods. So that brings us to the question, why do albums like this fade away? I'm not sure. Many musicians list her as an influence and credit her as being a successful songwriter. Elton John, for example, was incredibly complimentary towards her, continually speaking out to help her achieve more success. However, I don't know about you, but I don't talk to Elton John often, so I, I haven't heard about Laura Nero. And I don't know about you, but you probably don't get tea and scones with him on a Saturday either. So how do we get introduced to music? Well, you, you have to seek it out, like you're doing right now. Or you're introduced to it by your families, your friends, your co-workers. So if not many people back in the day connected with Laura's music as they did to the Beatles, Led Zeppelin, and the Birds, it becomes easier and easier for Laura's music to just fade into the aether. I can't speak for all of her other albums, but in the case of this one, I want to speak out in favor of listening to it. It's honestly criminally unfortunate that such a woman isn't talked about as much as she should be. So here I am trying to flip the switch. Please give Laura Nero's album a listen. I promise. It's a soulful and diverse treat to delight your ears. Thanks for watching. I hope that helps. I love you all.